Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm, of course, your OSA Joe Tronlove. Here back again for sorts of review topics. Uh, this time, episode 145. Uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, plenty of stuff to go over today on the podcast. Um, the MLB is back. UFC 287 is on Saturday. Going to go over that, as well as talking about the NBA playoffs. Give a little predictions as far as uh, who gets in, who gets out, as next week we begin the play-in tournament for the NBA um, to solidify the final playoff spots and the NBA playoffs. So, going to talk about all that and a bunch more, but alas, thank you for joining me. Um, of course, before we get into it, um, due to sports overview topics, or if you want to see more of these videos, click that subscribe button it down in the corner, um, and click that notification bell as well. But alas, thank you, and... Let's get started. Let's get started. T- First, what I want to talk about on the podcast, the plan, the plan tournament for playoffs is starting Tuesday, so less than a week away. So the field. Mostly has figured itself out and the NBA playoffs, and these are the standings as of today, uh, which I'll go over and then, of course, give my thoughts on you know predictions and also who represents each conference. Might as well. Go over it. early predictions already, but yeah, so as of today for the Eastern Conference as follows, Milwaukee Bucks, number one seed, Celtics two, 76ers three, Cleveland Cup, Cavaliers four, New York Knicks 5, they have all cemented their playoff spots, or spots in the playoffs. Brooklyn Nets still going strong at 6. And then, as far as the play-in so far standings, we got the Miami Heat at 7. Toronto Raptors at 8, or excuse me, Atlanta Hawks at 8, Raptors are at 9, and a team I would not want to face right now, the Chicago Bulls at 10. So, as it stands right now, and... Every other team in the East has been eliminated from playoff and playing contingent. So, this is how it go right now. Pretty much the only case is for who gets the 16, either the Brooklyn Nets or Miami Heat. As for... 8-9, Eight and nine. The Raptors and Bulls are tight in the plan. So I guess there is a way f- for the Hawks to get the six seed, but right now it seems either the Miami Heat or the Brooklyn Nets are 
going to be a six seed. So I'll pull up the remaining games they have left really quick. So Miami Heat finishes the regular season. Two road games. So they will finish on the road tomorrow evening versus the 76ers. And then they will finish on the road in Washington on Friday against the Wizards. I'd say they go one and one in that final two because the 76ers can still wait. Let me go back. Yeah, the 76ers can still get the two seed. And now I don't know. I think I would rather face either well, I mean, you don't know, but I would rather face the Brooklyn Nets right now than or even the Heat than possibly one of these. Well, I mean, not sure, but 76ers have a chance to still get the two seed from the Celtics after last night. So, based on that, if all goes fall, the Heat would Go 43 and 38. Now let's check the Brooklyn Nets remain games really quick. So let's see. Currently, they're leading the Pistons by 13. I think. They can hold on and win that matchup. Then they go play hosts to Orlando, the Magic. A unique young young team. I was kind of hoping they make a little run, but not to be. Uh, Paul Benchero. Uh, Nice little for nice little first season. And then they host the 76ers. So 76ers are gonna be very intriguing in how this shakes up. But I'd say they go in order for the Heat to Get the six seed. I'd say the Nets would have to lose out and Miami wins out. And I don't think that will happen. So I would give Nets would win against Pistons and then I think they be against the Magic but fall to the Sixers. Um, on Sunday, so there's that. So they would hold on to the six seed. So that's how it stands. Now, also, Miami would have to worry about the Atlanta Hawks. So Yeah, but nonetheless, I'd say this mostly stands um, currently. So, I would have, so based on the plan, I would say Miami over Atlanta. So, Miami would get the seventh seed. Toronto, I would have lose to the Bulls. 
I'm just really digging the Chicago Bulls as of late. Just really digging them. So, then we got the Hawks facing the Bulls for the final playoff spot in the East. And I would actually... Now, Hawks did beat the Bulls the other day. So, they got momentum on them. It would be at home, but I'm really... But I think I would swing towards Chicago just because I... Atlanta puzzles me at times. Same with Chicago, but I think with just what they have on their team, I go with the Bulls in that matchup. So, then based on that, Milwaukee would host the Bulls. Celtics would host the Heat. 76ers would host the Brooklyn Nets, Cavs would host the Knicks. So, I would have, or I would predict Milwaukee over Chicago. I would have the Celtics over the Heat. And yes, I just boast about Chicago for a bit, only for them to be one done in playoffs, but I think with the way their role has been, uh, just seems like they'll get in for me. Sixers over Brooklyn Nets. And I would have the Knicks being, well, that would be an intriguing series. The Cavs versus the Knicks. Because the Donovan Mitchell aspect. When it looked like Donovan Mitchell is going to the Knicks to join Jim Brunson, R.J. Barrett, and Julius Randle, quickly has stepped up at times this season. But I don't know. With Garland and Mobley's there and Donovan Mitchell... I would take, huh, might go six, seven games. I'm going with the Cleveland Cavs in that matchup. I would say. So then, Milwaukee hosting the Cavs and Celtics, Sixers. I would take the Celtics, or actually, right now I take the Sixers over the Celtics, and I take Milwaukee over the Cavs, Milwaukee versus Philly, and then I'd have Milwaukee win, and going... GME Finals representing the East as my early prediction. Now the East, which is much more dicey. As it stands right now, the Denver Nuggets won. Memphis Grizzlies two games behind at to boy is that gap been bridged. It looked like Denver was going to run away with the one seed. But they've hit some adversity as of late. But Sacramento Kings have been the great story of the season at three. Phoenix Suns at four. They have all locked up 
a playoff spot in the West. As of currently, Warriors currently the five seed and the Clippers are the six seed. How it stands right now. Oops. So let me pull up the schedules as of late. Uh, my Wi Fi is being a sh- crappy right now. On my phone. Okay, there we go. So the Warriors wrap up their schedule on the road in Sacramento Friday night and then go to Portland on Sunday. The Warriors on the road. (sighs) I mean, you don't know what to say. They have been just horrific on the road this season. I don't know how to explain it. They've just been terrible on the road. But I think they'll finish ultimately 1-1 and there. And stick with the 5 seed. Clippers, Clippers, ay, ay, ay. So the Clippers, ooh, that made the site. So tonight, Lakers, Clippers, Clippers finish. Hosting Portland and going to Phoenix. I'd say they go one and two actually in those final three. Which would open the door then for the Lakers to get the sixth seed. Five to say. And the Lakers host the Suns and the Jazz after those two matchups. I think they I think they lose the Suns, but they beat the Jazz. So they go 2-1. So they would actually be this six seed then. Wait, yeah, the six seed. Now, as much as I like the Mavericks, I don't think they're getting in. Let's check up on the Pelicans and the Timberwolves as well. So, let's see. So, the Pelicans host... Oh, that may be for... That's going to be crucial. So, currently, the Pelicans are playing the Grizzlies, have the Knicks, and go to Minnesota on Sunday to wrap up the season. It's hard to say, but I think they go 0-3. I think they go 0-3. So let's check the Timberwolves really quick. So tomorrow, Minnesota, or Saturday, Minnesota goes to San Antonio and hosts, obviously, the Pelicans. 
I think they go 2-0. So by that nature, I have them taking the two seat or the eight seat, excuse me. So Pelicans would be 40 and 42 if they lose out. Now, last piece of the Thunder. Sorry, I'm taking longer than I expected. So Thunder would go to the Jazz, that's dicey, and then host the Grizzlies to end the season. They would go 1-1, one one, but that wouldn't be enough. So based on my predictions, then 1 through 5, 6, but the Lakers move up to 6. The Clippers would be the seventh seed. Pelicans and the T Wolves would actually switch spots. And OKC would take a 10. So, based on that, let's see. So, right off the bat, so you would have the Clippers hosting the Timberwolves. I would take the Clippers in that matchup. So they would be 17. And then the Pelicans, the 9 seed versus the 10 seed, OKC Thunder. OKC is young. They're hungry. I mean, I just... Now, Pelicans are very tough. As well with Brandon Ingram, Valanciunas, I mean, McCollum. They are very good. Very, very good. But SGA to me is the wild card, I'd say. But I don't think it's enough. So I'm going to go with New Orleans in that matchup. So then, for the eighth seed, it'd be Minnesota hosting New Orleans. And ultimately, I think Minnesota takes that one to be the eighth seed. So then, in that case, we'd have Denver hosting Minnesota. We'd have the Grizzlies hosting the Clippers. We'd have the Kings hosting the Lakers. And then the Suns versus the Warriors. Provide no one gets hurt. KD versus the Warriors for the first round will just be epic. Just be epic. So, I would take the Nuggets over the T-Wolves. I would take the Grizzlies. Uh I would take the Grizzlies over the Clippers. I would take the Lakers over upsetting the Kings. And they would advance. Suns versus the Warriors. That is dicey. That is dicey. But that is good enough to be a finals. I mean, you got to win games on the road. And I just think with that, them not having home field advantage, I just, I got to go with Suns here. I got to go with Suns. You know, all healthy. So, based on that, or no wait, I would have the Warriors actually beat, 
I would have the Suns. I would have the Suns. So then, the Nuggets would then host the Lakers. Grizzlies hosting the Suns. I would have the Nuggets over the Lakers. And now I would have the Suns over the Grizzlies. And then we get the Suns and Nuggets. And the following match. And ultimately decide the West. All healthy. It's getting tougher, but I'd go with Denver in that one. So my matchup as of today in the finals. Denver, Milwaukee. There we go. And back to the podcast. So, from speaking about professionally NBA, now got to go over the national champions and give their flowers as Final Fours are officially done. In the NCAA for the men and the women. UConn. The Huskies. Out. The former four seed in the West. Midwest. Yeah, I have. Bracket right here. Actually, the West. But. Their row. Was swimmingly easy. Swimmingly easy. And against San Diego State on Monday, they certainly had some adversity. Certainly had. While they led at by 12 at half, San Diego State Kept them on their toes. They kept them on their toes. But the deficit only coming as low as five points. I mean, San Diego State just dug themselves too big of a hole in the first half. And Again, they tried and tried. I mean, San Diego State, what we saw was a gritty team all throughout the playoffs. But unfortunately, against the Huskies, uh, it was just not enough. And Huskies get their fifth NCAA National Championship. And... Their five appearances. Only one loss in the in March Madness. It's crazy. But for the program, you know, what can you say? Sunogo, I mean, the all crew just played Swimmingly well, I mean, thing about winning the national championship is you gotta be good, and you also gotta be a little bit lucky, in the sense that Arkansas took care of Kansas, upset Kansas, and Kansas was a. Regarded favorite by many. The number one seed in the West. But. They got knocked out. By the Razorbacks. UCLA. And Gonzaga. Pretty much beat each other up. So. You thought. Gonzaga. Was going to give more of a fight to UConn. But that wasn't the case. 
certainly wasn't. And UConn just rallied and rallied. And they got it done. They got it done. So, cool still. Cool still. San Diego State, their effort should not be lost or all for naught. I mean, the Mountain West does not get, I mean, does not get a lot of credit. I mean, lower conference, you know, but nonetheless, what, I mean, credit, Boise State, Utah State, I mean, those teams went out fairly quick, but San Diego State made themselves a run and certainly earned their way to the finals, certainly earned their way by being Charleston, Maryland, Alabama, Creighton, and FAU. But when it came down to it, I mean, that buzzer beater versus FAU was great, but unfortunately didn't get it done versus UConn. So there was that. I mean, against Miami, I will say too, UConn, I was a bit worrisome, but did not happen. Hey, man, congrats to the Huskies. And LSU. LSU. And Angel Reese took apart Kalen Clark's Iowa Buckeyes and did, did not worry or did not go away. Um, Kalen Clark has had some great performances uh, in her own right um, in this tournament, but you know, ultimately wasn't the case. As LSU was just too much. Too much. And. Cool to LSU. For getting their ring. You know. The issue is about what Angel Reese said. And blah blah blah. About her, the coach. From LSU. I mean it's just. Whatever. Trying to. Try to start an argument that won't go well. Um, the backlash for them, it's just whatever, whatever. But cool as LSU, cool as San Juris and all. The coach did cool as all around for LSU. Major League Baseball back, and boy, did many miss it. Opening day was late last week, and boy, was it fun to see again. As weather was the Texas Rangers against the Philadelphia Phillies, weather was the Mets over the Marlins, weather, I mean, etc. There was just much fun, much fun on opening day, and the last few days has been rejuvenating to see baseball as a whole. Baseball season for the MLB back again, and it's going to be a fun ride, you know, long we're ahead, a long season. It's going to be interesting, going to be interesting. May sore lines already ahead, already ahead. We got, for starters, the Mets, Edwin Diaz, 
you know, he'll be basically out for the full season with his injury he suffered. Here's that. Um, Aaron Judge, the reigning MVP. How is he going to follow up that amazing regular season he had a year ago? You know, can the Angels actually do something with their two stars? You know, Mike Trout, Shohei Otani. Can they actually do something? That's the question. I mean, you got the Dodgers, the Padres, strong from last year. The Phillies, I mentioned. You know, my, Bryce Harper is not going to be available reported till possibly Memorial Day. So, interesting things to think about. Sore lines. Thus, as you get into the MLB start of the season, but it's going to be a fun ride, and we're all for it. So, we'll see. We'll see. UFC 287 is on the way on Saturday and should be a heck of a card as one thing we know headlined by an intriguing rematch unless in the main event Alex Pereira looks to defeat Israel Asanya for the second time in the UFC Pereira has obviously beaten Asanya not only in the UFC but kickboxing before amateur base, whichever you want to say. But Pereira seems to have Asanya's number and can Asanya rewrite it, the narrative. And yet it's built back. That is, remains to be seen. But. Along with the main event. We got some good. Fights to look forward to. On. The main card. And the prelims as well. Headline of the prelims. We got Kelvin Gaslam. UFC veteran. It, uh, Sonya knows him very well. As well, from that great interim tall belt, uh, from years ago, but number 15 ranked versus number 14, Chris Curtis. That should be a fine bout to headline the prelims on Saturday. And then we got the main card opening up with Rahul. Rosas Jr. The very young guy from Mexico who claims he wants to be the youngest UFC champion in history. That remains to be seen, but he has to get started and has to keep going against Christian Rodriguez. But we'll see we'll see how that goes. Then we got Santiago Ponzinibbio versus Kevin Holland. Should be fine bout as well between two solid veterans with knockout power, which you don't want to miss. Good so Rob Font versus Adrian Inez. Number six versus number 12 in the band went. Rosa's guys work come out, cut out for him, but he's obviously got to eye this fight as well. You know, the bantamweight division is, you know, creeping up pretty swelling. I mean, you got Murrow, who just 
took apart Pierre Jan. You got Corey Sanhagen, who just diced up Marlon Chito Vera. You got Sean Sugar Show, Sean O'Malley. Along with, of course, the champion, Aljamain Sterling, who's going to face Henry Cejudo next month. But this fight got to be at the top of the road as well as we look to provide some clarity at the UFC 135-pound division. But Rob Font is a beast, and I expect him to get done as uh, again, the co-headliner has some unique implications as well. Number five ranked Gilbert Burns against the owner of the BMF belt, Jorge Gamebred Masvidal, number eleven. You know. Mosville, he, you know, he, he desperately needs a win. He's even said himself, well, he may, he might hang it up in the UFC if he loses this. But if he wins, that's a big feather in his cap and getting another towel shot. Especially now with Leon Edwards, and we know that feud, and that's an interesting fight to make. Although Dana White has said, made it clear that Kobe Covington will get the next crack at Leon Edwards' strap, remains to be seen, but we know Dana has his way, or get see to get his way with what he makes the calls. So, we'll see, but alas, Mosville, since his rise, you know, you know, being Askren, being, or knocking out there until, being Nate Diaz, you know, losing to Usman, not once, but twice, and then losing to Kobe Covington in that grudge match. He desperately needs a win. Gilbert Burns is tough. He's gritty. I mean, he gave Usman everything he could handle in his tall fight. But came up short, you know, of course, his best performance in the Octagon was against former champ Tyler Woodley. We'll see how he fares against Jorge Masvidal, but I expect him to show big time for this bout. The main event, the main event is strange, but something to keep an eye on. As Alex Pereira in his first defense against the last style bender in Israel Adesanya, coming off his second loss in the UFC, his first in the division, you know, Adesanya had Pereira on the ropes at the end of the first round in the last fight, but over time, Pereira Poured it on, and the power and such got done against Asanya. Asanya, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Because, keep in mind, Pereira is still less than 10 pro fights. MMA fights so that's a unique factor in this belt 
the inexperienced yet experienced Versailles Sanya. So, curious to see what changes are made for Sanya. Because we know the specimen that he Pereira reminds me of in a way Kendall Grove and Tiago Silva just in the way he's built and the way he's I mean but for my money I'd say uh, Sonny gets his belt back I I just I don't know about Pereira that's his thing I don't know but alas, it should be a fun card, and cannot wait to see it. Um, I mentioned the NBA regular season coming to close, and as well for the NHL, hockey is getting to strange point as well, where alas. Some teams have clinched their tickets to the postseason already. And should be noted. So, no surprise that the Bruins, you know, already they clinched the best record in hockey. And I mean, still going strong. 60, 12, and 5. 60, 12, and 5. You know, well ahead of Toronto Maple Leafs. And, you know, it's going to be an intriguing way to see how they keep this momentum going into the postseason. But we'll see. I mentioned Toronto. They're well back into the postseason. You know, Austin Matthews and the other center they trade for. For guy's name, sorry, I know, but last, you know, can they make it past the first round? That is a big question, obviously, with the Maple Leafs. Can they finally? Again, make it past the first round. We'll see. Tampa Bay is still Tampa Bay. They're hungry again for the postseason and another Stanley Cup as they're back in the postseason as well. Carolina, well, from the Atlantic to now the Metropolitan. Carolina Hurricanes, no surprise, their name has been drawn, and they are back into the postseason with 50, 18, and 9. New Jersey Devils right behind them, and the New York Rangers, so they're getting it as well. No surprise. We go to the Central. And. No surprise. It's pretty much a three team race. For. The best record in the division. Colorado Avalanche. The reigning Stanley Cup champions. Currently in first place. Dallas Stars. Four game, three games, three and a half games behind, excuse me. And the wild card, per se, the Minnesota Wild, they're back in the postseason and looking to make a name for themselves. Then we go to the specific, Pacific, excuse me, Vegas Golden Knights. You know, 
what did you expect, you know, dead taxes and the Golden Knights making the postseason no surprise, Edmonton Oilers falling up, and the LA Kings, so, interesting notes there, but, we didn't see, we'll see. But, it's getting to that time. It's getting to the time. You know, NBA playoffs happen soon. NHL playoffs happen soon. So, keep an eye out. Keep an eye out. But, excuse me. The last thing for joining me, guys. Um, good on the podcast today. Um, again, if you haven't seen, or if you like to see more of my videos, click that subscribe button there in the corner. Um, click the button, click notification bell as well. If you like this video, though, leave a like, clicking the button, thumbs up on the channel as well. How about the video? I last. Thank you, guys. See you guys next week. Uh, for more sports overview topics, but well, I uh, thank you all. Be safe. I made you a true love. Get out of here. Peace.